Hi everyone, my name is Kerry. I'm a neurodivergent business owner and I run a company called Discover Inclusion. We create resources to enable access to learning, communication and play. And today we're going to be focusing on access to art. Art is such an accessible form of communication because it's completely open to interpretation and can be done in so many different ways. This is an Indian artist who uses the paintbrush held in his mouth to paint beautiful scenes. The next image is a blind artist from Texas who feels the consistency of the paint on the canvas to guide him. The third is an autistic man from the UK who drew the New York City skyline from memory after a 20 minute helicopter ride. And my final example is an art project in LA featuring over 300 wheelchair users creating art over a blank canvas over 200 square metres in size. Whilst all of these artists are incredible, we don't need to create a masterpiece to call it art. The primary aim for me is ensuring that everyone involved enjoys themselves and creates something they can enjoy looking at. Maybe you don't like the final piece, but you can look at it and laugh thinking about the memories of making it. Art's very rewarding, because it gives instant gratification. You can see what you've created as you make it. It doesn't require any previous knowledge or a high level of cognitive function. You can create something that's visually appealing or a sensory exploration without the intention to create art. For some people, there are simple changes we can make to gain access to traditional activities. A paintbrush is small and it's not always possible to buy the adaptive attachments for whatever reason. So here's some of my favourite free or cheap adaptions. To start with, you could try making a hole in a tennis ball and sticking the paintbrush or pen inside. This gives a large round grip to hold on to. The artist still has control of a small paintbrush but can hold it effectively. You can attach the tool to a rolling pin or an empty cling film or tin foil uh, roll. This makes for a longer and sturdier handle that can be held with two hands. I've ad in the picture, I've adapted a toilet roll firework with a rolling pin so that my students can hold it steady with two hands to create a giant firework display. We can increase the size of the canvas using a wall or a bed sheet and using paint rollers as our paintbrush. We often expect art to be done on one A4 or A2 piece of paper, but we can magnify our experience by changing our canvas. Try stretching a white bed sheet over the kitchen table or opening up an Amazon box. Not only do both of these options increase the surface area, but they're also able to withstand multiple layers of paint or changes in pressure in ways paper doesn't. If you don't want to put a paintbrush in your mouth, then there are ways to control it. This young woman is using a frame attached to her head to control the paintbrush. Whilst I don't have any way of doing this at the moment, just out of things found in my house, I do think it's an interesting thing to come back to. Last but not least, I love printing activities because you get to create recognisable images, but you don't need to know how to draw it. You can, of course, use pre-made stamps or have a go with potatoes. You can cut your own shapes or use cookie cutters to add a pre-made shape and then add a handle to the potato like a fork or a knife to increase someone's ability to hold it. I have made a whole video on potato printing on my YouTube channel so I'll link that at the end. However, the ability to hold these items does not limit our artistic potential. So here are some more ideas that don't involve holding a tool. We can adapt finger painting to be safe and tasty for people who have a more limited control of their limbs. For example, a girl I used to work with, Eva, would naturally return her right hand to rest by her mouth. For her, it wasn't sensible to use poster paint because she would end up consuming it. But we can create edible paint to give her the chance to paint with her hands. Make sure you're checking for allergies first. 
but plain yogurt and a couple of drops of food colouring is safe to consume and still makes a great paint. Get out a few bowls and put a few scoops of yogurt into each one. Add a couple of drops of your chosen food colouring and mix it all together. It's a good idea to paint onto card or a cardboard box so it doesn't rip with the addition of lots of yogurt and it can withstand our stronger movements. Depending on the artist's reach, you can put the canvas on a table or hold it up in front of them, making sure to give them chances to change colour and clean their hands in between colours. I will say I always advise getting all of the cleaning equipment ready before you start and covering anything important. In Eva's case, it was the control for her wheelchair because there is no limit to where the paint might end up. For some people, using their body to move an instrument isn't possible, so we can change the activity to give them control over the creation, but the able-bodied person working with them completes the action. Think about how we might use an e-tran or an eye gaze system to make choices or communicate. All of this is done through eye movement, and either another person or a computer is following that movement. This can be translated into creating art. The first thing you want to do is choose your colours. For this, use your normal method of communication and pick out a few colours that you want to use. You'll need to create a strongish frame from card or cardboard and cover it with cling film or plastic wrap. Before starting to make your painting, make sure to communicate and decide how you will signal a colour change or to stop, when to remove the paintbrush, things like that. This might be the same stopping point as your communication for when using the e-tran in other situations. It could be closing your eyes or another signal that you already use. The job of the artist is to move their eyes in the direction they want the paintbrush to go and signal for colour changes, etc. The person holding the frame is simply the manifestation of those movements. Follow your artist's eyes, listen to their communication and take their lead. When you've finished, leave the painting to dry and then cover it with another layer of cling film or plastic wrap to keep the painting safe. As someone who often struggles with sensory processing, I think it's important to provide options that don't involve getting sticky or covered in paint. My first suggestion is for modelling. Instead of clay, we can use air drying clay. Not only does it come in a variety of bright, funky colours, it has a consistency closer to Play-Doh, it's not wet and sticky, and it dries quickly, becoming light, a bit like foam. One simple activity with limited exposure to the new material is creating a flat piece with a rolling pin and encouraging the person to lay their hand flat and squish it in. With a small amount of pressure, you've created a hand imprint that can be displayed. And by asking the person to choose the colours they want to use, you add a bit of their personality into the piece. Or you can get a cookie cutter, stamp, toy and create an imprint of that instead. We can also paint without getting anything on ourselves. The first option is putting a variety of coloured paints into a Ziploc bag and moving your hand across the bag to mix the paint. You can also add in different textures to make it more interesting like rice or add stones to help you manipulate the paint. The second is putting out a big canvas or sheet with the chosen colours of paint in blobs across it and then covering it in cling film or plastic wrap. You can then use your hands or instruments like rollers or paint brushes to mix the paint and spread it across the sheet, or even grab some cars and toys to create tracks and prints across the paint. I want to talk about one more art technique we can use, and this might be my favorite. The first step is adding lines and blobs of glue all over a page. You can pour the glue straight from the bottle, scoop it out with a spoon, or paint it on. Then you want to get pots of different coloured confetti or chopped up tissue paper and, of course, lots of glitter. You can pour the different coloured confetti across the whole page or separate them into different sections 
and add glitter on top or add more glue and put the glitter in different places. You can also mix in wood chippings or rice or oats with paint and glue and then transfer them onto the canvas. Using the different colours and textures to create the art is not only interesting for the artist, but also creates a multi-sensory experience for the person viewing the art. I hope I've given you some new ideas for creating accessible art for yourselves and those around you. If you are stuck, then please don't hesitate to message me. And if you want to share the art that you've made, I'd absolutely love to see it. Before you go, I did mention that we have a YouTube channel. So if you are looking for more detail, that's the place to go. Our company focuses on resources supporting access to learning, communication and play with a variety of physical resources that focus on visual representation with images that show diversity of race, religion, disability, gender and more. If you're interested in that, then our website is discoverinclusion.co.uk. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of the day and have so much fun creating your masterpieces.